The monotony of the landscape is broken by the occasional outcrops of granite rock dotted across the plain. These are the Kopjes, solitary mountains in the savanna, like islands formed 500 million years ago and revealed by erosion. Due to their strange morphology and the fact that there is always water and cracks in the rocks, many of them are home to species of plant and animals found nowhere else. these rocky areas we will see animals that are not found on the open plains. Like the Redunka or the Dictic, the smallest antelope in the world, about the size of a domestic cat. The strange name comes from the sound it makes, a sound sadly well known to hunters because it warns the gazelles of their presence. The barren surface of the rock is where the Agama lizards meet. The brightly colored male of the species tries to attract the female by upward movements of his head. If she accepts, she moves closer and repeats the same movement. Well done! The bright coloring of the males also has its negative side. They can be seen not only by the females, but also by the Varu eagles and the kites that live on the kopjes. The male must display an order to defend his territory from competitors and attract potential mates. And when he does, it is the perfect time for the kite to spot him. The females realize the danger, but the male is too busy showing off and doesn't notice until the very last moment. The Kompjes are also frequented by the fastest land mammal on Earth. The cheetah, capable of reaching speeds of 110 kilometers an hour when hunting, is completely exhausted after each chase and so needs to choose his prey carefully and make as few mistakes as possible. The high grass of the savanna, which provides excellent cover, also prevents him from spying his prey. So he climbs up to get a better view and spot potential victims. Thanks to his tremendous speed, the cheetah is the most successful feline hunter in the Serengeti. However, with the advantage of speed comes the lack of strength to fight off lions and hyenas, and whenever they can, they will snatch his food from him. This herbivore, the Thompson's gazelle, makes up 90% of the cheetah's diet, and he will join them on their annual migration. Wherever they go, he follows in pursuit. The gazelles follow the herds of news as they cross the savanna. Some types of grass are stimulated by the saliva of the gazelle and produce shoots shortly after being cropped, thereby becoming a succulent meal for the gazelles. The new represents less than 5% of the cheetah's diet, but he is nonetheless very much affected by their migrations. Life in the Serengeti is influenced by the migrations of the news, but is ultimately determined by the rains. Between November and December, the humid westerly winds bring the long-awaited rains from the Indian Ocean. The grass of the savanna, which during the dry season has lain dormant, greedily soaks up the water and shoots up in an explosion of activity, which in just a few days 
transforms the landscape of the national park. From the Maasai Mara Reserve in Kenya, where they have spent the dry season, the news moves south again following the rains. Their cycle of migrations is complete. Year after year, endless lines of news have come along these same routes and have thus etched permanent tracks stretching right across the savannah. First towards Lake Victoria, along the western trail at the end of April. The rains move on from the Iasi area and the news duly follow. August takes them to the Masai Mara Reserve in Kenya. As every year, hundreds of news die in the crossing of the Mara River but the majority reach the northern bank and, after four months of wandering, are able to take a well-deserved rest. <laughs> 